Hello, welcome. My name is Chris Morgan. This is video five in our reactor subtract subtractive synth demonstration. In the previous video, we added an LFO that was affecting vibrato. In this segment, we will add an LFO and affect tremolo, which is amplitude modulation. So vibrato is basically frequency modulation at the sub-audio rate. Tremolo is amplitude modulation at the sub-audio rate. Later in the course, we will talk about frequency modulation synthesis, where we use this frequency input here and get sidebands and create complex spectrums. We'll also do amplitude modulation synthesis. So those are at the audio rate, and we'll discuss those later. But for now, we can start our process of recycling code that we've already used. So in our structure here, we can see what we did last time. Real estate's getting precious here, so I'm going to move this up, and I'm going to take the code that I did for the LFO vibrato, and I'm going to copy it. Not the plus, because when we do amplitude modulation, we will be multiplying, because we need to rescale things by their 0 to 1 value range so that they never exceed 1 for amplitude. For frequencies, we deal with big numbers like 440 hertz, 260 hertz, or MIDI note numbers for pitch like 60, 48, so forth. <clears throat> so we'll copy these with a command C, and then I'll paste them here and I have the identical um, LFO. I'm putting it with the ADSR. The ADSR is a unipolar signal that goes from 0 to 1. I'm going to multiply the output of the LFO, which is going from, in our case, 0 to 2. I need to change that real quick to make it 0 to 1, um, just like it was by default. It's going 0 to 1 on the depth, but that is being rescaled by the bipolar <coughs> wave shape, sine, triangle, square, and being output it then as a range of negative 1 to positive 1. But it doesn't matter because 1 times 1 is 1, 0.5 times 1 is 0.5, anything times 1 is going to, um, any values within 1, 0 to 1, times any other values that go even from negative 1 to positive 1, they're always going to stay within the range of uh, uh, negative 1 to positive 1. So we never need to worry about clipping. The most important thing though is to remember that we need to multiply those things. So math and multiply. Now, there is an important complication here. Unfortunately, I'll go ahead and hook these up to the multiply for right now. Going from 0 to 1 for amplitude is identical to going from 0 to negative 1. It's just that the polarity is reversed, so you won't hear anything different. So I'm basically going to hook this up wrong for a second. I'm just going to go straight into the multiply the, of the envelope generator, and um, we're going to we're doing this wrong on purpose to demonstrate something that that the LFO as a bipolar signal is not the best way we want to do this tremolo. We really want it to be a unipolar signal, but I'll demonstrate it wrong for now. And what we'll hear is we're going to um, set. I need to move all these controls. Now you see they're all jumbled up together in the panel. I'm going to put, turn on the wrench, move my ADSR over a little bit more. But now I have this problem. How do I select just the ones for the tremolo? I can just select them here and shift click and get that. And now they're selected down here and I can easily move them over by themselves. So I might rename this first one to be vibrato shape and then the second one I can rename to be tremolo shape and so forth. Later we're going to put these things into what's called macros and that will allow us to um, consolidate it and make it look neater on the screen. And plus I have them at a large size right now. So I might go ahead and label this um, tremolo, keep things straight, and we'll keep the other one for now. So uh, what we're going to hear, take off the wrench, we're going to hear some tremolo, but it's not going to quite be right as we'll see. So I play, um, and I give it some depth because at zero, anything times zero is zero, so I've got a problem there as well. But as I increase this, uh, remember it's still on square, let's set it to sine wave. Now the rate I have here is, I'll set the, this to zero, the rate is set to one hertz. But if you're counting, you can tell that that's actually two hertz because the positive cycle of the sine wave is fading the sound in and out, and the negative is also fading it in and out. What you can't hear is that when it goes from 0 to 1, the polarity is one way, and then when it goes from 0 to 
negative one for the negative portion of the sine wave is flipping the polarity. So something's not right there. What we need to do is make the, our, our output of our LFO unipolar. So uh, we'll see this several times, but I'm basically going to make the output go from set of negative one to positive one to make it go from zero to one. There, this is such a common thing to do that they have an object that's totally dedicated for it, multiply and add. So what will happen is I'll take the output that's going from zero to one, I'm uh, sorry, negative one to positive one, and then I will add, connect it there. Under the next two inlets, I'm going to create a constant. I'm going to take the value that's, that is, goes from zero, negative one to positive one. I'm going to multiply it by 0. 0.5. Now it's going to go negative 0. 0.5 to positive 0. 0.5. In addition, I'm going to take that and add a constant onto it, add a 0. 0.5 onto it, and we will be offsetting it, shifting it, everything up by 0.5. So I rescale it in half, I multiply by 0. 0.5, so now it goes negative 0. 0.5 to positive 0. 0.5. Then I add on 0. 0.5, so the negative 0. 0.5 plus 0. 0.5 becomes 0, and the 0. 0.5 plus 5 becomes 1. So now I've basically taken a bipolar negative 1 to positive 1 signal and converted it into a unipolar 0 to 1 signal. I'll hook that up and now listen to the difference. Perfect 1 hertz, 1.104 hertz um, unipolar uh, tremolo. And as I increase the... And the ad other added benefit is that if I set the depth to 0, because of the offset I have, I will always have some amplitude. It's not exactly perfect if you start to really think through some of the math, but it, it works perfectly fine for our purposes. So this is somewhat tricky and we will there's a whole entry on converting unipolar to bipolar that I have in the pages notice that I've got a 0.5 here and a 0.5 here I really don't need to have both of those I can take the output of the first 0.5 and plug it into the second one a student showed me that trick and I, I like it anything to take more objects off of the screen to decrease screen clutter is important we will reuse this code for this unipolar vibrato, I'm sorry, unipolar LFO that yield, that we use for tremolo, and the envelope generator, and we will connect them both to a filter over here, and that will, we, we will be getting very close to completing our subtractive synth. And also keep an eye on this width for our square wave. We can modulate that with an LFO and give ourselves pulse width modulation. So we'll use the LFO four times as vibrato, as tremolo, as pulse width, pulse width modulation, and also to modulate our frequency of our, our cutoff frequency of our filter to give us a wah-wah effect. But, but at this point, we'll, we'll stop and do that in the next video.